What's up, guys? It's Natalie, and welcome Hi. back. <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of the Natalie Michelle Warren podcast, where we talk about everything, apparently. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. Um, I've got two of my very best friends, favorite people in the world with me today, Miss Tanya and Miss Kayla. And today we are talking about something a little bit different, little, little, little bit different. Um, so obviously on this podcast, you know, normally we talk about business and life and beauty and, you know, stuff like that. This episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about religion and faith and spirituality <laughs> and spirituality and how it kind of affects us in our everyday life. And we're also going to be talking about the uh, little Nas video because that's kind of what has sparked this whole conversation here recently. And, you know, here's the thing, right? Whenever I would go to talk about like this episode, like I was telling people in my life, oh, hey, like I'm, I'm going to record this episode. The very first thing that like everybody said, I mean, even Greer, our camera guy, even Greer was like, oh, get ready. Are you sure? This is like taboo. This is controversial. And in my head, I can understand why. But at the same time, I really can't understand why, because religion faith spirituality all of these things are something that every single person in the world has been affected by at least like at some point in your life no matter who you are no matter where you are from no matter what you believe you have come into contact with religion and it has affected you in some way and it's affected your lifestyle your culture it, it is it affects all of us so it's one of those things where whenever i Whenever I hear stuff like that, it's really interesting to me because I don't think there should be this weird taboo thing around it because it's something that we literally all can relate to. Like we all have our own opinions on it and we're all so deeply affected by it. So that's why I don't understand why it's such like a hot topic, I guess. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about that. But before we get into this, I want to do a major um, disclaimer. This is a safe space okay this is a super safe space um all three of us know each other in real life and i think i speak for all three of us when i say we all genuinely like love each other so if one of us says something that maybe you don't agree with maybe you are you do not think is right you i need you to come out of a place of love there I don't want any like hate in my comment sections I don't want this to be this major debate if that's what you thought this episode was that is this is not it this is a discussion and mm -hmm. this episode exists for educational purposes I religion has been such a huge part of my life since I was a kid and I know that so many of you guys listening to this the, the whole reason why you clicked on this episode and you're listening to this right now is because at some point it's affected you too maybe you just stumbled upon it maybe you know you just wanted to see what we had to say but either way um I don't want any hateful remarks to come at anybody I don't care if you disagree with us I don't care what you believe what you think like this is a safe space and this is so that all of us can talk about something that affects us every single day um so I just want to throw that out there this is a super safe space and this is not a debate this is a discussion and all three of us love each other like and we and believe it or not we actually can have different opinions on things and still get along pretty well so I just wanted to do that little disclaimer before we got more into the conversation but so with that being said let's dive into it so a couple what has been like a week ago <laughs> Um, yeah. Little Nas, is it Little Nas X or just what is it? Know Little Nas X, okay. Like the like the energy drink. What, there's Nas. an energy drink. What? There is an energy drink. Yeah. <laughs> there? It's Nas. I was like, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I guess that's it. So that's funny. so funny. I'm yeah, I think it's little yeah. Little Nas X. Okay. Or little Town Road. Little Nas. Nas. Little Nas. Has he ever Road. said it? I'm so sorry, Nas. If you see this, I'm so <sighs> yeah, sorry. I'm not. You. I mean, we apologize. I'm just old. not sorry. I'm, just old. <laughs> I'm mostly not sorry because, like, if you didn't know how to say my name, I'd be like. It is what it is, so yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, but it's not really that serious. Lil Nas, I highly doubt that you're going to see this episode, but if you do, we love you, and we're so sorry if we say your name wrong. Um, 
But so a couple, it's been like a week ago. And this is the thing. I, me and Greer were talking about this. I am so out of touch with pop culture that like the only time I ever know about anything that's going on is when Tanya tells me. So I'm the pop culture queen. She's a pop no, culture queen. queen. Um, so like a week ago, you came home and you were like, oh my God, have you seen the Lil Nas X video? And I was like, no, the guy, the kid that did O-Town Road. And you were like, yeah. Yeah. And, um, so there's a music video. It's the name of the music video is called Montero. And, um, it is a, it has become a hot topic. It is a little bit of a, it's become a controversy because in the video, um, there is what people are alleging are quote unquote, like satanic symbols. But I mean, in the video, he pretty much from start to finish, which watch it if you're not definitely listening. a satanic symbol. <laughs> He's, like He's definitely. definitely sliding into hell on a stripper pole, but yeah. And he, yeah, and he did <laughs> give a lap dance to just, the devil. Just a few satanic things happening in there. But I don't want the words, I don't want like the word satanic to get uh, misconstrued. And we're going to get into that like in a yeah. second. But, um, but basically, if you watch the video, it starts out and he is in what looks like is in the Christian faith, like the Garden of Eden. Eden, I can't even speak Eden. Um, and then the whole music video, you kind of see the Garden of Eden. You kind of see like this like judgment situation. Then you see um, him sliding into hell on a stripper pole and giving a lap dance to Satan, just casually, you know. Um, and then. At the end of the video, which a lot of people, I think, have not even... They get so frustrated from the video that they just shut it off and don't even watch it till the end. Um, uh, He, like, kills the devil, and then he, like, becomes, like, the king of hell or whatever. So that video happened, and it sparked so much outrage. And then the shoes happened. (laughs) I mean, come on, Nike. Like, you just woke up and decided, let's do this. Well, Nike didn't do it. Yeah, that's the truth. Nike didn't do it. Apparently, Nike didn't do it. And another disclaimer, I 90% of the time don't know what's happening in pop culture. And then I come, and these two, like, tell me everything. So So funny. Yeah, it it all comes from Miss Miss Tanya over here. Pop Um, queen, literally. Pop queen. But that, though, but just to clarify, Nike did not release those shoes. Those shoes, there was, I think, um, there was 1,500 that were made, or some, like, really, like, small. No, there was... 666 pairs pairs that were made they were fifteen hundred dollars yes yeah and it was actually made by a designer who redid a nike shoe nike i think actually filed a lawsuit against it because of all the controversy but um yeah i don't think they were they were happy about that um but i mean people redo nikes all the time and make them so i don't really know necessarily how they're gonna what they're gonna do about that but Anyway, so this music video dropped a little bit ago. It sparked so much controversy, and we're going to talk about it because I think that the reason why it sparked so much controversy is people like talking about what affects them, Mm -hmm. and religion is something that affects all of us. So once again, I think that whenever things like this happen, it sparks things that we've already been thinking and that we've already kind of like had in our like psyche. And whenever things like this happen, it just kind of, br- it's a, it's an excuse for people to talk about their opinions, right? Like, um, so with that being said, before we kind of give our reactions to the video, I want all three of us to talk a little bit about our upbringings and our relationship with spirituality. Um, Tony, you go first. So, um, I don't really have any crazy stories, um, to do with my faith or religion. I, if you all didn't Except know, for when the nun hit you on the back. Yeah, that's a whole other story. <laughs> oh um, I grew up Catholic, but I was Mexican Catholic, which, um, if you guys don't know, I am Mexican, um, full blown Mexican. Both, both of my parents are from Mexico. I was born here. Um, but I did grow up Mexican Catholic, which is insane. It's a really insane form of catholicism um we pretty much believe in god and everything that you know catholics here in the united states believe in um one major difference though is we believe in la virgen de guadalupe so she's technically pretty much the mother of of jesus mother of god um but she is mostly a protective um symbol for the mexican community Mm -hmm. She takes care of the immigrants. She takes care of um, Mexican children, all of, all of that. So I did grow up Catholic. Um, however, 
my mom and dad never really forced me um, to go through it. You know, like I, they pretty much let me do what I wanted to do. I was baptized at one because that's a Mexican custom, you know, when you're very young. Um, I did go through, um, you know, my first communion, my com- my confirmation, everything. Um, so I am technically, you know, accepted in the Catholic Church. However, I do not classify myself as a full Catholic because ever since I was young, I always um, had this deep love for Greek mythology, for um, astrology, um, for nature. I mean, I remember doing little, like, spells in, you know, the bathtub. You would put water and soap and, like, flowers and just, like, mix it up. And it was a love potion, you know? So, I mean, I I was afraid. I was afraid of, you know, wanting to like that because of the Catholic religion. But I ended up, you know, learning about spirituality and there's more people out there like me. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I do classify myself more spiritual than Catholic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I love it. I'm happy. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, you. No, you go. You go. I'll go last. Okay. <laughs> so, the question. What is the question again? Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your upbringing and your relationship okay. with like your spirituality. So I was born in Atlanta, and I remember the little like um, church bus. The little church bus would come around, and um, that's all I really knew about you know, God growing up was there was this church bus. And sometimes when I was bored, I would hop on it and then I would go and hang out with some cool kids, I guess at the time, little kids and hear them singing songs. But growing up, like I wouldn't say that I lived in a Christian household. Like I definitely didn't. My family did not go to church. Um, I did not really like believe in anything I mean I Mm -hmm. guess people talked about a god and I'd heard the name Jesus but I literally had no idea what was what that Mm was and honestly I didn't care um so I think it was around high school middle school whenever I started going to church with some of my friends and that's like the Christian church it wasn't like the Catholic church or Mormon or anything like that it was just um non-denominational churches primarily and then I want to say I didn't really care too much for it. I was just like, okay, this is cool. It's just like a cultural thing that you do. Um, And then I got to college at Campbellsville University. And it was like my sophomore year, I had just experienced so much. Like throughout my life, I had went through a ton of like very traumatic experiences. And so there was a lot of pride, um, but there was also a lot of like the need to lead myself. So I didn't really believe in anything other than myself. I just felt like, I have the power, I have the control, I can get what I want. Um, And I was very, I am very hardworking and I just felt like that's all I needed. The whole American dream was like my goal and I didn't really care about anything else or how to get there other than that. And so my sophomore year of college, um, I was just fully broken down and it's a long story, but long story short, um, I just had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and um, Jesus like totally introduced himself to me in a radical way and I just remember grabbing a Bible from my closet that a friend had recommended and just reading it. I have no idea why. I don't know what drew me to it other than the Holy Spirit and ever since that day my life has incredibly radically like been shifted and it was so individual. I had people around me that were believers but I had to switch my entire lifestyle. Um, So I had no friends in the Christian community and I was at this Christian college and um, I had no clue what was going on. And so I genuinely just used the rest of my college career to really serve on campus, to tell people about Jesus, and to really learn theology. Um, And now I'm still like in love with Jesus and um, 100% proclaim the gospel of Jesus and that he is the son of God and that he did come and it's Good Friday so I'm like oh yeah we're uh, we're filming this on on Good Friday which I think is like yes like (laughs) but I am a Christian and it only took me 20 years to finally get that opportunity not necessarily get the opportunity but to be um alive in Christ so I'm 24 now and the past four years have just been like a journey of walking with Jesus so yeah yeah Okay, so a little bit about me, um, which a lot of you guys kind of know this. If you've listened to the podcast, I talk a little bit about um, my kind of like upbringing, but 
I am from a super small town in the middle of Kentucky, and we are like right in the middle of the Bible Belt. So um, my parents were Southern Baptists, my dad especially. My mom um, started taking us to like more so of like a non-denominational church at one point. Um, but religion specifically, okay, we have, we have cats running around. I'm so sorry. Um, but religion specifically for me has always been like a huge part of my life, specifically Christianity. Um, my family is crazy, crazy religious, like very, very religious. Um, and always have been and probably always will be. Um, so I growing up was like always in church, like every single summer I was at vacation Bible school and I've been to many, many different churches, many different revivals. Like, like I grew up in the church, I like to say like, so Christianity has always been like a really, really big uh, part of my life. Um, when I was 19, I got the opportunity to go to Israel and Egypt and a couple countries in the Middle East. Oh my God, guys. So, early, want to join the podcast. podcast. So, if you're watching the video version of this right now, my cat just jumped on the table. Joe, Joe's making an appearance. So, yeah. He's the center. He's so Joe funny. That is so, so funny. So, anyways, I grew up in the church pretty much. When I was about 19, I got the opportunity to go to uh, some countries in the Middle East, um, Israel specifically, Egypt, a couple countries out there. Um, and if you know the Bible, you know that that is actually the area where majority of the Bible takes place, obviously. So it was a really, really cool experience for me. I, I went with Camels University, which is like where uh, Kayla went to school. And um, I, it was a really awesome opportunity. I got the opportunity to get baptized in the Jordan River. And that was the time where I really did feel like I had a different encounter with God. Um, so religion has always been a huge part of my life. I was never one of these people who, you know, didn't come from like a church background and then found God. Like I've always grown up in church. And with that being said, there, I'm so... Hmm. religion has always been a huge part of my life but religion has also hurt me a lot um because there are things in the bible that sometimes can be very hurtful to people um and so like why, about the time that i was like 16 17 you know just kind of growing into like my sexuality and just kind of becoming, you know, like a person, like just typical, like growing up stuff. Um, obviously, you know, you guys, you guys know me, if you know me in real life, you know that I am bisexual. And that was a really hard thing. You know what I mean? That was a really, really difficult thing um, to kind of go through in like the Christian church and the Christian community. There are a lot of people who do not think that is right. Um, and they just don't really think homosexuality just anything other than being like heteronormative is right and so that was really hard growing up with and so things like that have kind of been the biggest deterrence for me in like my relationship with God so that's kind of like where I'm at you know like I do feel like that there 100% is a higher power and I do think that um, Jesus Christ was a real person. And I do think that the resurrection was a real thing. Um, I feel like for me personally, I have, I struggle more so with things that have happened and things that have been done in the church and by the Christian community. I think I don't necessarily find so much, <sighs> It's so difficult because it's almost hard to find like the verbiage for what I'm saying. It's one of those things where like I 100% do feel that there's truth in the Bible, but I also feel like the Bible can be very hurtful to people yeah. and that that's something that people don't want to talk about. Um, and that it's something that all of us are kind of dealing with, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at and that's a hard place to be yeah. pretty much. So it is just it's just really hard because I like to see Christianity and Catholicism as this beautiful religion that brings people together and that, you know, is accepting and loving and caring. That's how I see it, right? 
But then there's people who consider themselves Christians and, you know, they go to church and then they use the Bible for hurt and hate. To discriminate against yeah, people. To hurt because yeah. they don't like uh, they don't like what they see, so they use the Bible mm-hmm. to hurt. And me and Caleb have already talked about this. Um, for example, I, I don't want to like get into a controversial subject because that is not who I am. I love everybody. I love everybody. <laughs> she I'm, loves controversy. What do you I, mean? I just like drama. You know, I just like drama. I just like to stir the pot a Natalie, little bit. Natalie, I said, wait. <laughs> wait yeah. But, but like, in a loving way, not in like, like no, I hate people. Like, a lot of Trump supporters would use the Bible mm-hmm. to hurt. We were talking about this. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, not every Christian's like that. I mean, yeah. there's, there's very open-minded Christians who mm-hmm. go to church love god yeah and still love people that for me is also where i find a lot of uh of a lot of problems yeah. is because like you know like and you know this about me we've talked about we've had many conversations about this it's difficult for me to be like yeah absolutely like i am a christian because of the narrative that surrounds christians in america yeah. right now and i don't want to be associated with some of the things that we see people who claim to be christians yeah. do And well, I would say, and this is something you and I talked about, but the aspect of hating Christians has became like pop culture now. And it's interesting because it's always been a thing that people are not always in agreement with Christians, whatever. A lot of people are in agreement with all the religions, right? Mm -hmm. But I think something we talked about was in not in politics, but when Trump came into office, I was a freshman in college. um, And the generation that's upcoming now that has such a big impact, um, Gen Z, they they were growing up with this idea that Trump is the image of Christianity. And I don't know his faith personally. I don't know anything about the man personally. I don't think anybody does except for those closest to him. But I will say the view that a lot of people used... um, the way that they saw Trump was really harmful to a lot of the younger generation and the mm-hmm. current generation. And we all know that the next generation sets the culture. Um, yeah. So I think because of that um, view of, well, if this man is a Christian and he's leading our country and we feel, and I'm not saying, you know, he, I'm not saying anything about his faith. I don't know anything about him, but I am saying there was a lot of negative views yeah. about the way he treated people because of faith or that he was that image of faith. And so these kids are growing up seeing that. And yeah, now it's sure. almost that um, it's popular for to hate sure. on Christians. Yeah. Um, and so I would also, something that you said a second ago, I would definitely say that um, you don't want to identify with the hate that comes with the religion, but you're not supposed to identify with the religion. You're supposed to identify with the, uh, with the person which was Jesus Christ and mm-hmm. is Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so if you're walking and you're identifying with Jesus, then the rest is taken care of. Mm -hmm. But when we find ourselves walking with religion, then that's when the mess starts. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And two, then I just wanted to like add to what you were saying, a couple things. First thing is (sighs) people like myself who are like are in the LGBTQ plus community, like we know this, but um, some of the distaste for homosexuality is not singular to just Christianity. That is not just the only religion yeah, absolutely. that does not support the what Kayla is saying is like it is Christianity is so polarized because of um, America pretty much that it's one of those things where they Christ, the Christian community catches a lot of flack. It's the cultural norm. So like if you're a Christian listening to this, like I don't want you to feel attacked. Like I want you to feel seen because because Kayla and I both identify as Christians like we and I've grown up in this community like I understand exactly how you think like I do you may not think I do but I promise you I do and it's one of those things where you know Kayla is right in a sense that I think the reason why there's so much scrutiny put on the church and put on Christians right now is because of the scrutiny they put on the rest of the world Um, and it's exactly like what you said you know you need to walk with the person and not with the religion but how do you proclaim the name of Jesus Christ whenever so many people who also are doing that mm-hmm. are yeah. saying a message of hate? And, and where do we kind of fit into that? Yeah, I would say that scripture tells us that following Jesus is a very narrow road. And so it doesn't say that it's easy. And in fact, Jesus, honestly, in every aspect of his ministry, he's telling people, you don't want to follow me. 
Like, do you know who I am? Do you know what I stand for? Do you know what I'm asking you to do in order to follow me? And so I think, especially in our culture, the U.S. is so focused on happiness, but Jesus tells us to focus on holiness. And those are two different constructs. Mm -hmm. In holiness, you're going to receive the fruit of the Spirit, which is peace, um, kindness, gentleness, patience, all those things. Mm -hmm. But we're so happiness focused, but Jesus says count the cross or count the cost of what it looks like to follow me and follow me. Because he got on a cross on this day, that's what it's representing, is him getting on this cross and being beat. Do you think he wanted to do mm -hmm. that? But it's like we fear that same persecution, so sometimes it gets us to be quiet. But in reality, if we stand up and stand with Christ, then imagine the radical change if we really did treat and act in love in the mm -hmm. way that he did. And he just held himself to such a high standard because he was God. Yeah. But at the same time, there, the reason for his death was for freedom for us and for us to realize we are not perfect mm -hmm. and that's okay. Um, and so, yeah. yeah. And, and that's something else I wanted to say <laughs> because, um, because we were talking about this. Um, a lot of people, because we're kind of just assuming that a lot of people understand like the, the concept behind Christianity. The concept behind Christianity is there's Jesus, right, who is the Son of God, who is God in human form, who was crucified on the cross. That's why the cross is kind of like the symbol of Christianity um, for the sins of the world. So essentially, like, because Jesus was crucified – if you accept Jesus and if you believe that he is, you know, the believe, believe in the Trinity and, and all this stuff that um, it's kind of like John three sixteen, like you will not perish. You will see eternal life pretty much. Um, yeah, just so, sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's go. <laughs> girl, let me say, I vacation Bible school, vacation Bible school. Girl. It's, I, and that's the thing too, because there's certain things to where even if I didn't believe in it, I couldn't forget it because at such a young age, it was like drilled into me. Um, but the reason why, I wanted to say that is because that's that is the whole point of the religion just for anybody who is listening to this and you have z you know because we're just kind of assuming that everybody knows exactly what we're talking about i just wanted to like specify that um you said something that i want to i want to ask you a question what does the idea of seeking holiness over happiness mean to you I think it's not necessarily an object that you're seeking or a goal, but it's in the process of knowing who God is. Um, and I'm forgetting the word that we use, um, but it doesn't really matter because it's just a theological word. But basically, whenever you are in relationship, so for example, I'm engaged mm -hmm. and my fiance and I, when I first met him, I didn't know anything about him. I just knew he was some loud guy that everybody knew and he was funny, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people hear Christianity as this loud thing that everybody in the country knows. But when I entered into relationship with my fiance, I started to know him deeper. Mm -hmm. And in knowing him, my life was changed forever. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going into a marriage with him, mm -hmm. which is a major commitment and is allowing me to commit my life to him. Now, the issue with um, a lot of people is they think like, oh, I have to hit this standard in order to become a Christian. I have to hit this standard in order to be better. But in reality, I didn't have to hit a standard for Emmanuel and I to get married. I didn't have to hit a standard for him to love me. I was who I was. He accepted that part of me mm -hmm. and he grew with me. He saw me through a lot of dark stuff and he still does. Mm -hmm. I'm mean. Like I can be very mean, <laughs> um, but he still we chooses you, to e walk with me. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Shout out to e -man. <laughs> but he still chooses to walk with me and love me. And that's the way Jesus sees us. He sees us as his beautiful brides. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do that could allow him to view it, you as anything different. Um, and so it's just that commitment of saying yes for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, yeah. And so it's a pro, ho, to answer your question, holiness is not in an instant, and it's not something you work for. It's in the process of being with Jesus that you are forever changed. Mm -hmm. um, and you're never going to be perfectly holy. I mean, that's what heaven's for. We're going to be great. It's going to be a good time. We're going to be holy and I mean, in heaven. Jesus, Jesus died for our <laughs> but, sins, you know? But, you know, it's in that process that he transforms you. It's not as soon as it happens. It's not, you know, so. Yes, okay. So, um, okay, so with all that being said, I wanted to kind of trail back and to talk about like our initial reactions to the video. Yeah. So whenever the video happened, what what was the first thing he thought of? Miss Tanya. Okay, listen. <laughs> Out of the three, I am the most controversial. I'm a little hey, She said, I'm not controversial. You either really love me or you really don't like me Some at all, right? Here. So I, like Natalie, 
am also part of the LGBTQ plus community. I am bisexual. I love women. I love men. I love everyone. I think God put us here to love everyone, right? So why am I limited? That's how I see it. Um, so I know, I knew Ness was homosexual. I know that. I knew he was gay. I knew, you know, I already knew this song, the music video specifically was going to be a little, you know. When I watched it, I loved it. It was art to me. I knew exactly what he was saying. I knew where he was coming from. I knew Natalie. the story because I've been through it too, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, it's a lot easier for a woman to be in the gay community than it is for a man because it's sexualized. You know, us as bisexual women, we tell a man that and they're like, oh, let's bring oh. another girl into this, you know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, with men, it's it's harder for gay men to come, you know, to be gay. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, there's... there's because of toxic masculinity. Yeah, toxic yeah. masculinity. There's literal camps, conversion camps. To still. Get, yeah, still, still, still to get them to change. And, I don't know, for me... It was just really, really sad because, you know, I'm in Kentucky. I'm in central Kentucky. So I, I'm a, I am a mixture of like all these really open-minded people. And then I have not so open-minded people in my life. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard to, you know, to see the different reactions you know, um, I love everyone. Like I said, I love my not so open minded people, friends, too. Like, I love everybody. Um, and I would never judge them because that's what that's their opinion. That's what they think. That's what, you know, they grew up with. And, you know, people grew up with different opinions. Um, it just made me really, 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 really sad um, for all my gay friends who came to me crying and like really, really upset because, you know, of this video and what's going on and how it makes them feel because you know i love religion i respect all religions you know every single religion i love learning about religion it's beautiful it's beautiful religion and faith is beautiful i mean i didn't grow up christian but i still love when you when kayla talks to me about her the stories the bible i learned so you much read the bible i do yeah. kayla gave me a bible and one I time still read it. <laughs> one time at the end of work i was like doing a, a what was it a like theatrical version of yeah. like david and goliath and i swear it was love the it. most like, dramatic love thing it. ever and she was like yeah queen but yeah for me it just made me really sad that it's 2021 and we're still doing this like i'm still getting calls and texts from my LGBTQ plus friends, you know, like asking for help and advice and just to talk to me because they feel so alone, so alone and lonely in this world. And it's even worse because, you know, Christianity and like Catholicism is supposed to be love and love others. But people like that that are against it because the Bible says are pushing people away from religion Mm -hmm. instead of embracing them with the arms of God, with the yes. love of God. They're just pushing those people away. And ultimately they're condemning them to hell, which they don't have the, you know, the right to do so. The only person that can do that is God himself mm-hmm. or herself, whatever you believe in. You know, like I said, I'm open-minded. I believe in everything. Yes. But, um, yeah, I love the video. I thought it was art. Um, um, that's me. That's just what I think. Yes. I remember, <laughs> I remember whenever we first watched it and you, and, and here's the thing before, when I first saw it, before I even like looked at it, saw anything, anything about it, before I read about it, anything like that, after I watched it, I looked at Tanya and I was just like, do you get it? And oh, and yeah. you were like, yeah. And I was Absolutely. like, I, I, I get it because I got it. But because here's the thing. Because we're part of the community. Yes, because yeah. we're part of the community. But, beca- but here's the thing. Probably. I could understand where other people would not understand that and what i'm looking for right now if you're watching if you're watching the live uh if you're watching it on the video i'm trying to actually find um the statistic that i had screenshotted the other day um but basically i was i was trying to find some actual stats you know what i'm saying because for, this, for this conversation i was actually trying to find some information on this because i know because this is such a common conversation i know that we cannot be the only ones thinking this and it was something like as of 1975 whenever they did a poll in america it was like 72 percent of people identified as christians and in 2020 like last year it had dropped to like less than 49 percent 
So Christianity in America specifically is the fastest declining religion. And I think that's definitely because of the younger generation. A lot of people are not identifying as Christians anymore. So I just wanted to um, throw that out there. But um, I want to tell you my reaction to the video. But Kayla, what was your reaction? Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I mean, I was on, the, on FaceTime with you all with yes. my reaction. And I was honestly just like, I mean, I was talking to our camera guy, Greer, before this, and he said, I, I asked him what his reaction was. He's like, I wasn't really surprised. And I would say that's honestly my reaction. Yeah. But, like, honestly, the graphics and the animation on that was, like, beautifully done. Oh, but, done to, <laughs> but, like, like I was really, amazing. like, impressed by, like, just the, the graphics. Hairs. But, like, the concept, I was like, I'm not really um, – I'm not shocked by it. You know what I mean? Well, like, why would I expect it to not happen, right? And here's the thing, too, and this is something that I think is super important because, listen, if you are of the Christian faith and you're listening to this right now, and if that video made you really upset, like if it made you really, really upset, this is why it made you upset. This is the thing. In, the, in pop culture right now, we look at the devil, Satan, Lucifer, Lilith, like demonology, like we look at all of these things and we almost say, oh, that represents seduction and empowerment and rebellious and like taking control of your life and da da da. That's the pop culture spin on it. In the Christian faith, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, all these things are like, I mean, literally like the enemy. Like, I mean, it literally says, you know, to be biblical, it's like, like is like the devil exists to steal kill and destroy anything that is any good in your life so i feel like whenever someone who's really religious looks at that video because i mean there have been moments in my life where i was super religious i was like leading bible studies and like you know doing all this stuff and if i had so, i grew up i wasn't allowed to watch the conjuring movies I was not allowed to like watch scary movies that involve demons because my mom thought that like one would like follow me home or something like that. Like that's the, that is the background that I came from. Like my mom does not play with stuff like that. And the, so in the Christian faith, it's not something to be like made fun of. It's not something to be like, oh yeah, like I'm going to like worship the devil because the devil represents like horrible things in the Christian faith. Now, the reason why that video existed was it basically what and what little Nas says was, you know, you're going to tell me that I'm going to hell because I'm gay. Well, I'm going to reign in hell and I'm going to become the king of hell. And it, it's basically like, for example, with women for so many years, women were called sluts and hoes and bitches and all these like horrible words. And now we jokingly call each other that like we all call our girlfriends like, oh, hey, bitch, we like, you know, da, da, da. we took that term and we turned it around embraced and, it. and embraced it. Yeah. And I think that that is what this video is an example of. It's trying to embrace it. But the reason why people are mad is because pe is because there is two different people. It's almost like two people who speak different languages and are trying and a one word means different things in different languages. Yeah. Because it's like to a Christian, whenever you see that, the first thing that goes through your head is like, why like this, like Satan is not a cool dude. You know what I'm saying? He's not a cool dude. But like in the pop culture spin, there has been a lot of humanizing of the devil. You have the series Lucifer. You have like, this is not the first time somebody's made like a demonic music video. Lady Gaga did it with Judas. Madonna did it at the Super Bowl back in the 90s. Um, Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj did it with Roman Holiday when she was performed at the Grammy and literally pretended to be possessed and was like grinding on a priest. Like there, this is not the first, this is not new. This is not a new concept. It's been done very many times before. The reason why the outrage gets sparked is because you have people who have two totally different interpretations of the same word. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's why I feel like whenever Kayla says she wasn't surprised because in the pop cult in pop culture like it has been so normalized, normalized to and embrace so like I embrace after I was just like, yeah, wow, that's wild. That's wild. But then I went on with my day. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's why do we expect the world to look like Jesus when he literally came and was the opposite of the world? So if you're a Christian and you're really tore up about this video, like, okay, but why do you expect the place that Jesus came to change and impact and was the opposite of to look like him? Our goal is to bring a little bit of heaven down right. and to help mm -hmm. people go up. And it's like mm -hmm. we expect the world to... Not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's just crazy to me. And so I get the outrage. I get 
I get all the perspectives of it, but it's just like really interesting to me um, mm-hmm. why we expect the world to look a certain way when it just doesn't, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that I don't even know the dude. Like, I don't, I don't know, but I do mm-hmm. know that a lot of my friends um, in the LGBTQ community plus, <laughs> Plus. I know that they've been really hurt by the reactions and by the conversations. Um, and I'm not okay with that. Mm-hmm. But it's a music video. Like, it's literally a music video. It's an expression of mm-hmm. this Art. guy's mind. Like, yeah. this this brain came up with something, and it was right. an expression of that. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's really sad that a lot of people are being hurt by that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I just, I wasn't shocked. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's wild. That's very wild music video. Yeah. yeah. But, um, Yeah. No, yeah, and I think so. I I think so too. It's kind of like, yeah, you know, I can totally see because so many people have made them feel like pushed towards that. Like it's kind of the idea of like, well, if you say, say I'm going to hell, I'm gonna dance with the devil. Like I'm gonna give Satan a lap dance and, and patent really leather really pumps, like, like, and he really, really, yeah, he really did that. He really did, he really did that. Yeah, but yeah. yes, yes. The long black boots. I wanted to. Look. I wanted to ask. Yeah, I wanted to. We're gonna get to questions here in a second. But before we do that. Um, because I think this is a really important question because right now we're only talking about our beliefs, right? Yeah. Like we're only talking about what we believe, what we think. There's a point where beliefs become actions and actions harm people. So how, what do we do as far as like, like ending the hate that is being put out by, and I don't want to say like that is being put out by Christians because I don't want to generalize, but what do we do about the people who have felt so ostracized from the Christian community? Because there's always going to be those people who gay people are not accepted. Like they, they, that is horrible. That is, you know, da, 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 da. Like, what do we do? Like how, like, how do we respond to that? Because it's kind of, because for me, I can only speak for myself. I'm not, I'm not about to sit on here and try to be like the speaker for like the LGBT plus community. I'm not trying to do that at all. Um, but I can only speak for me where so many of my personal problems come is the whole idea of having a relationship with the Lord, which is kind of like how you were talking about, like comparing it to your uh, engagement. It becomes so difficult to have a relate to try to form a relationship with someone who they're is evidence of them saying that you would be condemned to hell for something that you cannot change. How do we, where do we go from there? I think that's my biggest difference. And you know, and I'm gonna be honest, like big, big moment, like that's where so many of my problems come in. No, how do we as Christians, how do we in the Christian community go from here? Because here's the thing. How do, like, I guess I'm asking even for myself, like, how do I have a relationship with God if God says that I'm going to go to hell for who I love? Because that would be like the equivalent of you and me having a relationship and me, me saying that it isn't okay that you do something that you cannot change. No, I think that, um, why does that sin, why is that sin to you worse than anyone else's? Mm-hmm. Why is that worse than people who are Christians that have sex before marriage? Mm-hmm. Why is that worse than, um, you know, someone killing someone? Like, why mm-hmm. are th- why is that worse than other things? Why do you think? You know, I said something really smart. Because in that picture, we're all going to hell. Right. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that's like the level that you're viewing yeah. sin. Because people get really bothered when there's a gay couple yeah like really bothered more than like finding out your freaking high school teacher's a pedophile more than like finding out that your ex-priest is a pedophile mm-hmm. you know right. like people are so angry and i don't under- i don't know i don't understand why and i don't know if it's because the gay couple is happy and they're not happy in their own relationship i don't know but you're right like there's it's it's almost like if you're gay, like that's the worst thing you could ever do, mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. So to answer Kayla's questions, technically, if you believe in biblical truth, like all sin is created equal, pretty much. It doesn't matter, like what you do. like. Lying to your mom is yeah. just as bad as like you know killing somebody, which is crazy. That's a, that we could have so many conversations about just like the crazy stuff that's like in the Bible, like when it comes to stuff like that and like the standard. But um, 
I totally agree with you in the sense that like biblically everything all sin is sin and that if we truly believe in Jesus and we truly believe that he died on the cross then we should be forgiven for all of our sins but I think that the reason why the the gay community is still we still kind of deal with that is because people are really honing in on this because I remember listening to a sermon one time and it was all about the difference between sinning and living in sin and like knowing when something is bad and trying not to do it and then like embracing it. So I think that like, to answer your question, I think there's a lot of Christians who, there's some people, this is the thing, the Christian community has come so far. The younger generation of Christians, like I, I look at like you and Emmanuel and I, and I really truly like see what you guys are doing like in, because Kayla and Emmanuel are super involved in ministry um, and they do such an amazing job and they do so many amazing things. So definitely like follow them and like just support them, support what they're doing. Um, and, you know, and it's one of those things where more people should be like you guys. But the thing is, is there are still so many people in the community in the Christian community who are demonizing people. And it's not just, you know, LGBTQ plus, like that, it, like there's so many other things, like people who just don't believe in God, well, people I mean, who, even you like know. Mixed race couples. Oh yeah, I, especially, yeah. yeah, especially in the yeah. South, like especially in the or, South, it's bad. Yeah. So I think that is the problem of, it's always okay to have your own beliefs about something yeah. because someone could say, oh, you know, like it's, it's against my religion to, to be homosexual. I, my religion says that it's wrong. Okay, so that's fine if you have that opinion. But then that opinion becomes harmful whenever that person has a kid. And that, per, and that kid happens to be transgender. That kid happens to be non-binary. Yeah. Something happens with that kid where that child is no longer what that parent deems as acceptable. And they kick the kid out. And now you have a homeless teenager. And now that's a problem. Yeah. So that's whenever we we borderline run this fine line of, yes, it's okay to have these beliefs and opinions, but these, belief, these beliefs and opinions can become deadly. A prime example of another current event that has just recently happened was the uh, shooting in Atlanta at, with, those, um, with those women. That man, that was a hate crime. That man killed those women because they were Asian women. But he said his reason for killing them was because he had a sex addiction and he was a preacher's kid. Yeah. And he thought that that was the only way that he would free himself of that temptation pretty much. So then now we're dealing with crimes against women um, because we are objects of desire and temptation and all these things. So how, I guess a better question would be, what can the Christian community do to rid out the toxicity that potentially could be harming people? And I mean, and this is for everybody. It's not like just, you know, for Kayla, but like for all of us. It's a hard question for me to answer because I'm not part of the community. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, in my religion, and I'm not ready to talk about it yet, but when I am, I'll, I will talk about it. But in my religion, <laughs> um, in my faith, I do, I mean, like I said, I do believe in God. I do believe there is a God. I don't necessarily believe that God looks like what Christian may think he looks like. I don't even, I don't even want to go as far as calling him a man. I mean, he may be a woman. I mean, women create life. So yeah. who are we to say God isn't a woman, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's, it's a hard question for me to answer because in my eyes, the only Christians that could really fix this would be the next generation, like your generation and like the younger, mm -hmm. because I feel like there's going to come a, po a point in the world where people are going to be just done with the hate. I mean, I'm hoping and I'm praying we're getting there, you yeah, know, and we're getting there done with the hate done with the discrimination done with the judgment. Cause everybody's a little quirky now, you know, everybody's different. <laughs> Everybody has stuff to do and like, we don't have time to hate anymore. Oh my gosh. Yes. No, so no, I honestly, right. the, for me personally, the only like way this is going to end is time. Just time. And I don't know how long, but like, it's probably going to be a while mm -hmm. because we are progressive, but in the South, it's not that progressive. You know, mm -hmm. it's still taking a while for Southern people, Southern Christians, um, Southern Republicans to become open-minded and like, open up their heart and soul to di different people, differences, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I definitely think like what you just said about um, we are continuing, like Christians will continue to be hated almost. That's not the word you use, but that concept of like, as Christians, we are going into this path where people are not cool with us and it's not okay, right? But I don't think, and a lot of my Christian fam out there, you might get upset at this, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, I don't think that there's anything wrong with people hating us for what we believe. Because at the end of the day, and I'm going to say this from an outside perspective because I believe in Jesus, believe in all this, but if Jesus is real, and if God is who he says he is, and if the Holy Spirit is the essence of God working in us and through us, then why wouldn't people hate us? If Jesus was God and he had the Holy Spirit and people chose to kill him, to brutally beat him, to put him on a cross where he could not, the only way that he could breathe is if he lifted his toes up. Mm -hmm. And then they broke his kneecap so he could literally suffocate and die. And if people did that to him and that was God, Mm -hmm then why do we expect it to be roses for us, right? You know, I think that the way we treat people has to change 100%. But I don't believe that Christians should be the most highly favored and loved people because why would we not represent Christ, you know? There has to be some kind of, there has to be something that sets us apart. There has to be something that's different because Christ came and he was polar opposite of the culture. He was polar mm-hmm. opposite of what everyone was thinking. But guess what? People still looked at him and they still saw love. Mm-hmm. They still, there was something in Christ that made people draw so deeply to him because he was their creator. Yeah. And so in a Christian, you should have this effect. If you have the Holy Spirit within you from Jesus, and that's what I believe Christians are, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, there should already be some kind of drawing mm-hmm. that people have. And it's like, what do you do with that power? What do you do with that impact that you can hold? And so Christians have to be more accountable and responsible for the way that we are treating the people around us mm-hmm. and the world around us. Mm-hmm. Because if we believe that people will die and go to hell, mm-hmm. Why are we not working harder to teach them the gospel Mm -hmm. and to share the gospel with them Mm -hmm. and to love people and to teach them? We're not going to save people. Only Christ's spirit can do that. But how are we loving and treating people here? Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, Yeah, because the way they love and treating people isn't making people want to join the team. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I think that's what Tanya and I are basically trying to say. Um, and I think that, you know, this is, and this is a hilarious, crazy, sickening point, hard thing about this whole conversation is there really isn't any like solution. There really isn't any like, oh, this is, you know, what's going to change or this, what's going to happen. This is just kind of where we're at. It's not the type of representation that I saw Christians be because the, because I know a lot of people in my life who are. Christians and you know and the thing is like I really wish that we had um for this episode like I wish we had so many people from like all different religions to like for representation because because it's been super just like you know like Christians versus culture pretty much um and it isn't that like at all um because like I said like Kayla and I like are in this community like we've grown up in it well I mean I've grown up in it you're like very involved in it now and you know it's one of those things where I don't know if anything will ever change. I think that there will always be people who think that they are better than certain people and they will use like the word of God to um, discriminate against people and to separate and to cause division. But oh, wait, I think this is what we talked about um, early or the other day earlier, whenever Mm -hmm. Tanya and I were talking. And it was like, the Lord has God created us with free will. He mm-hmm. always gave us a choice. He always gave us an option. And what people do, because you just said um, mm-hmm. being better, what our human nature says is that I can be God and I can take away people's mm-hmm. choices um, because we have free will. And so we want to have that control. We want to be able to do those things. That's what created um, you know, that sinful aspect, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm not going to go into that. But period, like the fact that we have that in it desire mm-hmm. of like, 
I'm better than you, and so I can control you. Mm. And I can take away your choice, but that is the opposite of what the Lord has given us is a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you saying? I think that, and I also think it's the fear, like people's fear of the unknown. Mm. And the unknown is someone being different. You know, the, just not knowing that person is what's causing fear. And I think that's where it's stemming from. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I've been thinking, too. Um, but just, just switch the little subject a little bit because like, this just came up to my head. Um, <laughs> another thing about um, a lot of the Christians that I know and have come across, um, I, like we said, they use God and they use the Bible against people and to get what they want Mm -hmm. for example (laughs) the other day i got a message from a guy and he had asked for a picture of my body and i asked him does that is that really like important like does that matter he literally said to me god does not like ugly so why should i and i'm like are you kidding me you're really Mm -hmm. gonna use that against me and you know I am not like mani- like I don't get manipulated. I stick to what I believe and I stick to what I want to do and what I like. But if I was anybody else, um, I would see that and be like, "What? Like, why would you say that? Why would God not like me because I'm ugly?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that would push me away from the religion, yeah. you know. And that's not right. That's mm-hmm. not right. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. you cannot use our ever loving God against people for your benefits Mm -hmm. so we we literally we're gonna try to make this a short podcast and it's ended up being like over an hour at this point um but before we like signed off we did want to read some of um what you guys had to say about this but before we do that I, i just wanted to say like once again this discussion is meant to encourage and educate and to just discuss and i i truly believe that if all of us, like all of us, like across the world started having more conversations like this, we would have such a better world yeah. and we would all, there would be so much more love in this world. Um, so I asked you guys on my Instagram, which if you're not following me, Natalie Michelle Warren on Instagram, uh, follow me. And I asked some of you guys, like if you'd seen the video, what was your first reaction? And uh, I want to read what a couple of you guys said. So one of you guys said, sort of creepy, but the production was incredible. I'm only bothered by the shoes. I can see that. The shoes were kind of, I think, like that last like poke of like antagonizing people. (laughs) Um, But so someone said, I felt like it was making fun of Christianity until I read more into it. Now I understand why. Yeah, I think I think that I can definitely see that. Um, Someone had said don't need to see it to know he's just living his truth finally and freely the hate that the church is giving nas is a reflection of what is inside their own hearts mm-hmm. and some of you guys literally said uh what the fuck literally <laughs> like at the at the video um somebody said that jesus is so needed in the world right now tanya herrera said art <laughs> Cap- art <laughs> um yeah, a couple of you guys hated it, which is totally fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you guys? What Did you guys get some comments on yours? Mine uh, mine were mostly questions, but, yeah, that would start a whole conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I yeah. did have one comment that I wanted to point out. Um, you know, I like I said, I didn't really grow up in the Christian community, so – you know, I, there's only so much that I know, but somebody did mention, you know, when it came out where the Bible translated pedophilia to homosexuality. So, um, apparently this whole time they were actually talking about, you know, men wanting to bed with little boys, not like men on men, not like homosexuality, but like pedophilia, which like I said, I don't really know about it because I don't, you know. Yeah, I think that is a, um, I think that is a, um, (laughs) here's the thing. I, I'm, I didn't study theology in, in call. I didn't even go to college. Um, so I, and I'm not super, (sighs) I think there's a lot of people, myself included, that just really want the Bible to not say that. 
-hmm. I think that's kind of where that comes from. I think there's a lot of people who don't want it to say that. There's a lot of people who don't, who just wish that it said other things. And I just want to be respectful to the actual religion and like, if it does say that, that's, you know, what it says. If it would, because here's the thing, and this, we, this could be a whole other podcast and a whole other list of things that go along with this, but um, historically it is known that there's been a lot taken from the Bible just because of colonization and just because of the Romans and things that were happening. Um, the Bible was written, like each book was written at a different period in time by a different person almost. Um, so there, so there's the thing, there's a lot of like skepticism when it comes to stuff like that, but I just want to be respectful um, because I know there's a lot of people who are very religious and who are Christians and they're going to say like, no, it, it does say that. So I just want to be like respectful mm -hmm. to them and be like, yep, you know, if that is what the religion says, that's what it says. That's why we're here talking about it today because it has stirred up some questions. Yeah. And just a small comment because we got to wrap it up. But um, there's many times in the New Testament too where it does affirm that. So um, it's just like throughout scripture. Um, just different areas but i do know what section you're talking yeah, about i know yeah. i know exactly what you're I saying don't because, but, <laughs> yeah. i'm um, just i'm just a messenger here but yeah so natalie take us out so i just wanted to say if you've literally stayed until the end of this episode i love you so much and that means that you are most likely a lot like me you love people and you love uncovering why people think the way that they do um so like i said this episode is not meant to make anybody mad this episode is not meant to stir up hate and controversy and all that and be a debate it is not um it's honestly if anything it's more therapeutic for the three of us to talk about this and we hope this conversation helps you you know whether you are super strong in your faith and you're like you know that you know that you know um, or if you're like me and you have grown up in something that you struggle with and you kind of, you know, are struggling with your faith, like I'm, I'm here for you, like message us. I think all of us would love to oh, hear absolutely. your feedback. Um, and also, you know, if you, Connie, you, you take us out, but, um, this, this episode is meant, it, it comes from a place of love. So I just wanted absolutely. to say that. Yeah. Um, and before we do, you know, cancel out, I just wanted to say to all, of my LGBTQ plus um, people out there, whether you know me or you're just now getting to know me, you are loved. Um, you will never be alone, ever. Mm -hmm. um, God loves you. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves you. Yeah. Um, don't ever feel like it's not worth living and it's not worth. I'm gonna start crying. <gasps> this I'm a very I'm very passionate about this. Um, please don't ever feel like it's just not worth going on anymore because it does get better you are never alone um you are always gonna have people who don't like you but there's always going to be double that of people who do love you and do care and want to see you thrive and prosper and um you know and i'm one of those people i love you guys so much and i know you guys do too um and like natalie said we're always going to be here um if you just need a vent if you need somewhere to go somewhere safe just to talk about everything and how you're being treated at home. Um, just know you can always message us. You can always contact us, Conspiration, or contact us privately. We are always going to be here to talk and to, you know, be, give as much loving advice as we possibly can because you are part of our family, and um, that's never going to change, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. Love you guys. <laughs> awesome. Well, all right. Well, we'll, we are signing off. We love you guys so much, and yeah.